Cotton, what the hell are you doing? What? Cotton, you're orange. Only on the borders of my body. You mean your clothes and hair? I'm arch-tempered, Timmy. But you're exactly the same otherwise. I deal more damage. And have more health. Ladies and gentlemen, with every Elder Dragon and Monster in our world having completed the collection of Arch-Tempered Monsters even faster than Thanos gathered the Infinity Stones, how has the system played out? Have Arch-Tempered Monsters been worthy updates as a whole, or do the community's hopes and dreams need some avenging of their own? I'm sorry. Now that we've seen all of the orange-tinted beasts and had some time to think about them, which ones were done the worst, and which were done the best? Number 9. Kushala Deora I'm here! Flying over the Elder's Recess, coming to you live in the scene of Arch-Tempered Kishala! It's... it's not looking good! <laughs> oh, cushy boy, oh man, you're a rough one. As a melee weapon main, I already have a pretty hard bias against the base version of this fight, let's be honest. Considering how much time he spends in the air, and then even when he lands on the ground, his wind aura will just keep you from hitting him anywhere that isn't, like, the tip of his giant metallic wings, but Arch Tempered manages to simply take it to another level. The main thing that made Kushala semi-tolerable was that you could flash him to take him down and get a good chunk of damage done. In fact, done correctly, even with Tempered Monsters being capped at four flashes, you could get enough damage done in that time that even a 15 minute investigation was a non-issue. But the problem with that is that you spend the first minute using flashes and murdering the hell out of him, then you just sort of slowly chip at him while dodging attacks for the next 10 minutes till he eventually gives up and dies. Because Except Arch-Tempered Kashala can't be knocked out of the air by flash bombs! Not even once! He can still be disoriented by them, which is semi-useful because some of his range attacks can one-shot you now, but even stopping that doesn't make me feel better about losing my sweet, sweet knockdowns! So your one solution to Kashala's annoyance is gone. He's capable of one-shotting you, his wind pressure can actually knock you off of mounting him, and his final zone after waking him up with all the tornadoes and stuff is just a total death trap. Maybe I don't want to close my game when I fight Arch-Tempered Kishala, but I honestly believe that this Arch-Tempered monster is simply less fun and enjoyable than his regular version, which is what puts him all the way at the bottom of this list. Number 8, Kieran. The first of the Arch-Tempered Monsters, Kieran somehow managed to be simultaneously interesting and disappointing all at the same time. I remember how young and naive I was upon AT Kieran's release, legitimately spending an evening watching every single attack from both regular Kieran and Arch-Tempered Kieran, trying to find any changes, and after so much hope I came away from it with the realization that the first monster, the mascot of the entire Arch-Tempered system that we had been promised, just had a health and damage buff. Now past that glaring issue and that initial disappointment, Arch-Tempered Kieran was actually somewhat interesting. Even though the only change was health and damage, it made you have to think about the fight a little bit more than usual. The extra health helped Kieran a lot, making the fight a much longer slog and more of a marathon than the sprint that is regular Kieran, and without high thunder resistance, you had a ridiculous chance of dying within moments to this Arch-Tempered Fiend. The main solution that we found was actually mantles, as the Temporal Mantle had just released, we found that a combination of Thunderproof Mantle and Temporal on a rotation with full ranks of the tool specialist skill made for nearly 100% kill rate, as you would just have everyone completely avoid the fight unless they had a mantle on, and it was almost as if you were fighting a regular Kieran at that point, if not significantly easier. At the end of the day, I would label this quest and the monster within it as just sort of average. The only negative thing to say about it being that I wish there was more, but that isn't really a downside to anything that's actually there, is it? So my feelings about Arch-Tempered Kieran are just sort of neutral. Number 7. Lunastra. Wait, Lunastra, what you eating there? Go away, Teostra! I'm eating this meat! I'm so sorry! <laughs> A particularly late addition to the monster roster of Monster Hunter World, Lunastra holds a very strong place in my heart. She has some of the most interesting individual mechanics of a monster in the entire game, and having heard tale of old style Lunastra essentially being Blue Teostra and seeing what new Lunastra actually is just makes me really happy. You may think that would give me a bit of a bias towards her, but the entire point of this list is how much the Arch Tempered quest either improved or didn't improve on the original monster in the original quest, and this quest did very, very very, very 
little of that. Sure, she had more health and damage, but that part was a staple by this point in the release schedule. We knew that would happen, and we were wondering if there'd be more, because some of the monsters by this point had had proper changes, even if they were small. The biggest noticeable change on this quest, however, was the Teostra roaming around the map that you could watch a bonding attack with, not that you couldn't see the two monsters together in another quest anyways. I remember the night Archshepard Lunastra came out, Josh and I were fighting her for quite a while, faint after faint, happening because every time there was a supernova, one of us would die. Temporal Mantle didn't help because it was ridiculous chip damage at a really fast tick rate, and while we didn't realize it at the time, what we did eventually start using the day after was Astera Jerky. It just completely counters her supernova, letting you regen your red health and can completely save your life. The fact that her supernova became just that dangerous to have that high of a mortality rate, and then on top of that convinced us to use an item in the game that we had barely touched before, is exactly why Arch-Tempered Lunastra just squeaks past Arch-Tempered Kirin to make it to number seven. Number six, Zora Magdaros. Oh, Zora, you caused me such a significant amount of internal strife when you first released. I wanted to dislike him. I had every reason to expect to dislike him, but somehow, in some way, Capcom managed to make me actually enjoy a Zora Magdaros quest. Is that a joke? Well, I wouldn't do it any more times than necessary to get the armor set, but this list is about comparisons, and the main change in this fight is that it is actually a fight, that you actually have to pay attention to complete it, and if you go at it with less than four people, you might actually find yourself struggling to do the amount of damage required in the time limit. As it turns out, making Zora's quest shorter and upping his health actually makes for a somewhat engaging experience. The magma cores are more painful, and you have to attack them for so long to get the damage in that you have to be actually on top of dodging them if you don't want to suck up all your potions. When Nergigante lands on Zora, you have to actually fight him to fend him off, as opposed to the base quest where he just leaves after a while. And even then, you really do want to get Nergi off of Zora as quickly as possible, because the time limit on the quest is tight. It's so tight that the difference between getting knocked off of a small cliff by Nergi can be enough to fail the quest at the end. And then you get to the barrier section, which is exactly the same as previously, but again with more pace to it, more of a feeling of urgency. And while the actual physical list of changes to make Zora Magdaros an arch tempered monster is very small, the change to the feel and enjoyability and experience of his quest is actually quite noticeable. Number 5. Teostra no one can surpass me, and I am comfortable here. <laughs> now what, bitch? If you like to explode, then you've come to the right place, because Teostra was the first arch-tempered monster to actually have a new move, which was in fact another big boom boom. <laughs> This was in fact the only major change to his arch-tempered form at all, however it was a change that felt like it affected the majority of the fight, at least from the position of a melee user. This new head bob snuggle explosion essentially removed the universally accepted beatdown position for Teostra of standing in his tiny little armpits as one of his defensive options was now to just sort of poof everything into a puff of smoke within a short distance of his face. His health changed, his damage changed, and his supernova was of course significantly more threatening, now one-shotting any Thing it hit that was short of 32 fire resistance, and even then, the slither of health you have remaining will probably still see you in a cart before you can scream and bang at the burning you just chose to stand through. The final technical change in this quest, then, is the appearance of Arch-Tempered Kushala, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you remember that Arch-Tempered Kushala was released after Arch-Tempered Teostra, and in hindsight, the Kushala that was put in this quest was actually 100% the same as the one that we got to fight later on, even the lack of flash ability that still makes me want to cry. Teostra's arch-tempered version was actually quite nice. The changes may not have been particularly flashy, and the difficulty may not have been increased a whole lot, but the actual changes and the thought put into it by the developers really made the quest that much more fun to do. Number 4. Call to Roth. I'm here to do Cove to Roth. I want to do Cove. Cove to Roth. Let me see the sign of dragon. Hey, can I? Uh... You know what? No. You damn hunters and your unbelievable bloodlust. Oh, Everyone I... always so... says, let me do Cove. Send me to Cove. I just wanted to know where the bathroom is.
the molten golden empress herself, Kaldoroth, had some of the biggest systematic changes to any monster we have seen so far, including the addition of an entire extra phase of the fight, as well as a new theme tomb when in that phase and a crazy new loot table to go along with it. Honestly, it should say a lot that this is the only one of the arch-tempered monsters to full-on phase out the original version of the quest, but to be fair to the other monsters, Kalv is also the only arch-tempered who comes up as a timed event quest. The focus of the quest was nearly entirely changed with this version, as your goals changed from breaking each part once over the multiple quests of the siege, to breaking as many parts as close together to each other as possible to trigger the fury state and get better rewards for finishing the quest. As of the 94 five new weapons that came with Arch Tempered Cult to Roth, a fairly large number of them are actually usable and relevant endgame weapons, which is pretty cool in itself. Now, you may be looking at all the praise I'm giving this and wondering, but wait, this is number four. Why is it number four? It sounds like you love this. And the answer is that the whole reasoning behind this list, the use of the Arch-Tempered system and how much better the Arch-Tempered version of the quest is than the regular version. Regular Culve to me is like an eight out of 10. And as cool as Arch-Tempered Culve is, I don't think I could rate it any higher than like an 8.5. So the difference between the two versions is just smaller than the other choices, even if I consider it to be a fantastic redesign of the Culve to Roth experience. Number three, Nergigante. Oh no, a lance user has come to slay me. Ow, ow, uh, please no. The spikiest boy in town is back again with a vengeance and Nergigante was the final member of World's Elder Dragon Army to get an arch-tempered version, but it was just done so well. You could argue that being the final monster to get the arch-tempered treatment gives Nergi a significant advantage as the developers had the most feedback on the system before his creation. However, the order of release had such little impact on most of the other their arch-tempered monsters, that that statement is just a little unfair. I mean, Kishala was straight up in the middle of the line of monsters to be changed, and look how he turned out. Nergi's changes, then, were the classic health and damage boost, which of course makes his dive bomb a one-shot to most hunters, and makes it feel like the threat it is supposed to be once again. Nergi's fight starts in a different zone than normal, then progresses to a zone he never goes, before progressing to another zone that he never goes, then doing a scripted dive bomb on the way back to a final stand in his favorite nest. Arch-Tempered Nergi had a completely different soundtrack to normal Nergi, and then either Arch-Tempered Teostra or Arch-Tempered Kushala would invade and have a turf war at one part of the quest as well. Oh, and the deadly as hell new attack they added to him. Like, actually, this thing was incredibly dangerous whenever he did it. It's just so blindingly quick, and it really just took me off guard for so long while fighting him. The entire process of fighting him from the ground up is a little bit different at every stage of the fight, and the increased danger of the dive bomb combined with how much the new attack can surprise you really made the fight feel at least as enjoyable as the first time I fought a Nergigante, which is quite the achievement to attribute to an Arch-Tempered monster, and that is the reason that he absolutely deserves his spot on this list. Number 2. Val Hazak The effluvial artist himself, Valhazak in his original form, is like a sad little caterpillar, slowly crawling around on the floor while hunters absolutely tear him to shreds, time after time after time after time. Valhazak was farmed for jewels. He was just the easiest option, of course. He was so easy to kill, he didn't really hurt. Arch-tempered Valhazak, however, he is a whole new level, a butterfly of difficulty for world, at least at the time he was. Sure, in comparison to some of the harder quests from older games, he was nothing at all, but compared to what World had to offer, this new evolution of Mr. Hazak required you to pay the most attention and play the most carefully of anything in the new world up to this point. The damage buff to his miasma chunked your health down constantly, and if you didn't have health boost and full resistance to the miasma debuff, you would die in mere seconds if you didn't back out to heal. Arch-Tempered Val requires you to have the correct skills to fight him, and he requires you to manage your health throughout the entire marathon of a fight that it is. Any weapons with combos are super dangerous to use, and is Proud type miasma aura that he gets sometimes also lowers the strength of ranged attacks, meaning even ranged people frequently need to be directly in danger from not only his miasma, but his attacks as well. Arch-Tempered Val starts in a new location filled with environmental miasma and continues fighting in another area of a similar state, and the ticking damage of the natural miasma does in fact stack with Val's miasma damage, so the danger in this area is made even higher. Odogron shows up on this quest and does a cool turf war, which is neat to have happen, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really changed the quest a 
huge amount. But the main thing with this quest and with Arch-Tempered Valus the monster is that he is just miles and miles better than the original Val Hazak. Like, given the choice between fighting a normal Val and an Arch-Tempered Val, from a pure entertainment standpoint, I would choose Arch-Tempered Val Hazak any day of the week. Number 1. Zeno Jiva Oh, great teller of fortunes, what do you foresee happening on Arch-Tempered Xenogiva? Well, imagine that this apple is you. Oh, you carded. Bam! Oh, no. Oh, but that's not it. This apple is you again, but this time you brought a friend who's this apple. And you both carded. Bam, bam. The final entry on this list couldn't really have been another monster. Xenogiva was always supposed to be the most impactful fight in the game, and as if regular Xeno wasn't enough of a memorable experience, Arch-Tempered Xeno takes it to a whole new level. The first thing you'll notice in the Arch-Tempered version of this quest is that the first phase literally just doesn't exist anymore. This part of the fight was always just a sort of section meant to gear up to the proper fight in Area 2, where Xeno gains access to his full range of abilities. But Arch-Tempered Xeno says fuck that and gets right down to business, and his business? is killing hunters. Zeno's opening roar even destroys the pillars in the fight area, so if you are hoping to do a single jump or slide attack during this fight, you will find yourself bitterly disappointed. The health and damage are bumped way up as well, and the time limit is shoved down to 30 minutes, which actually makes it a slight challenge to get enough damage to kill him in time, especially considering how much dodging you have to do to avoid imminent death. This one is hard to be 100% confident on, but people seem to agree that this version of Zeno Jiva has lower idle frames between attacks, which makes everything feel significantly faster. The molten puddles on the ground stay for crazy amounts of time, and you can easily wind up with 90% of the map covered in damaging ground, which is just awesome, honestly. Zeno has multiple new attacks compared to the regular version, all of which are impactful and fun to play against. Arch-Tempered Zeno Jiva was incredibly difficult to kill for the first time, yet was such a fantastic experience to take part in. This fight brought back the feeling of fighting Zeno Jiva for the first time, but shifted my amazement from the aesthetically pleasing nature of the original fight to the actual mechanical side of the Arch tempered fight, letting me see a side of this monster that the original quest never quite got me into. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason that Arch Tempered Zeno Jiva is number one on this list. As for the Arch-Tempered system as a whole, now that we've seen its effect on a myriad of monsters, I think I would be fairly happy to see it return in Iceborne. Obviously, if it was a choice between an Arch-Tempered monster and a new monster, even a subspecies, I would take the new toy over the shiny version of the old toy every time. But I would still happily complete every Arch-Tempered quest that Capcom chooses to release, and I honestly think they have a good idea what they're doing with them now. Kushala is a massive step backwards with the system, but every Arch-Tempered monster released after him has honestly been better Better and better, so the future for this system and the possibilities it brings are genuinely exciting to me. I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and these have been the Arch Tempered Monsters ranked from worst to best. Which one was your favorite? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love So let's start with something simple and say Oh we love your eyes When they're watching us play video games When we make a bunch of jokes that are kinda lame Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters Or important important news about the kingdom and Amelia Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here Talking about the things you want to hear So if you want to be the first to hear Like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer Some of you are patrons even though We are all the noobs and you're the pros There's nothing we can do to thank you No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.